We always even plan the names before we get married that we're gonna name them Masha and Nibras and then we find out that it's a girl. So I said, oh my God, I cannot believe it. Like we are having a girl. <laughs> I could hear that siren, oh my god. Being in that ambulance, I wish nobody goes there like the way I went from home. There were eight people in that room and they were covered head to toe. They told me, okay, your wife, she cannot make that decision and what you need to do is you just have to consent that we are going to put her on the ventilator. And I said, okay, then, then go for it. Please save my wife and my baby. Everybody got involved to make the decision to do the C-section, to take the baby in the hopes that this would help Saida to recover from, uh, from her illness. We hadn't seen a lot of really critically ill pregnant ladies. And so this one definitely hit home. And it was, it was a wake up call for myself, my colleagues, the patients, to know that there were other patients who were experiencing severe illness. It made things really real, really quickly. And it's a lot to juggle when you're dealing with critically ill pregnant women because there's the patient herself and there's the unborn baby. Just the logistics of transferring a patient from the ICU with tubes and lines everywhere and everyone in full PPE, respiratory therapy, nurses, anesthetists, ICU, pediatrician, into an operating room and keep everybody safe and protected. But we got a big prize. We got the baby. Within hours of her returning from the C-section, uh, we immediately saw an improvement in her um, ability to breathe. And within days, uh, her improvement was remarkable. Then they decided when I was able to sit, to transfer me to a post-op unit. There I met my nurse, Tibi. Oh, my nurse. Saida was a very determined woman. Uh, she was very confident. She was so strong. She was very enthusiastic. I saw so much energy in her. Those qualities bring her out from that bed so fast, I mean within four days. Masha was actually one of our first patients uh, that had to stay in the NICU for a significant amount of time with uh, no parents or family coming. She was in what we call our, our pod one, which was our isolation pod. And unfortunately, because there was COVID in the home and um, Saeed was really ill and in ICU, uh, no one was able to come into the unit. So we took her on. She was part of our family, the NICU, and we looked after Masha while they couldn't come in. They've been there with me. They put a video call and they were teaching me how to bath the baby and how to feed the baby, how to birth the baby. And it was so beautiful just to watch. And that's how my day went. Like, I was excited for the next call. Okay, I'm going to see Masha now. Tickles, 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 tickles. <laughs> My world it was just about to fall apart, but then it didn't. I told Masha, and I thought I, I, I almost going to lose you, but here you are in my arms. <laughs> and I just hugged her and I cried. <laughs> A chance to live can be a very small word to say because if somebody will give you another life, I don't know how would you say thank you? You just gave me another life? No, it's something far more bigger than that. They gave me a new life with my family. They didn't lose hope on me and they took care of me. So um, thank you. 